Hello again, how are you guys? God willing to be all in good health. Today, I will talk about how women get their menstrual cycle in details. Let's start. Hypothalamus is located on the undersurface of the brain. It is lies just below the thalamus and above the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is divided into right pituitary gland and left pituitary gland. In the video, we will focus on the anterior pituitary gland. First, the hypothalamus secretes a hormone called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GNRH, and in turn stimulates the anterior pituitary gland through the positive feedback by producing two important hormones, namely follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. This process also occurs for males, but the difference is that each of these hormones affects the reproductive system, whether in males or females. The question I want to ask is, what is the effect of these hormones on the female body? First, these hormones are transmitted through the blood from the anterior pituitary gland to the ovaries, where eggs are produced. The ovaries are connected to the uterus by fallopian tube. Inside our ovaries, capillaries, which in turn allow passage of hormones. An important note, every female is born with a huge number of eggs, up to 2 million. But until the age of puberty, some of them are destroyed, and a certain number of them remain. Every month when ovulation occurs, some of eggs are mature, but only one enters the ovulation stage and produces only one egg. One of the signs of a woman entering the menstrual cycle is that it's shedding off the uterine wall. Before we continue, let's look at the concentration of hormones in the blood, according to the following diagram. The menstrual cycle is divided into two parts. The first 14 days is called follicular phase and from 14 to 28 days, it is called luteal phase. At the beginning of the menstrual cycle, the gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which is responsible for stimulating the secretion of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, is increasing. We have a slight rise in the follicle-stimulating hormone, and then there is a drop in its concentration. But the luteinizing hormone is constant, and I will explain the reason. During the ovulation process, since the first day, the follicle-stimulating hormone rises, and it will enter the ovary and stimulate the primary follicle, and then move to secondary follicle. Then, the estrogen hormone is secreted, which has many effects. At the beginning of the menstrual cycle, Specifically, the first 10 days, the estrogen hormone performs a process negative feedback on pituitary gland to stop the secretion of luteinizing hormone in a low concentration, and this is the reason why the luteinizing hormone remains stable in the blood. When the estrogen concentration rises, the proportion of luteinizing hormone is constant in the blood. Estrogen is just as important for women as testosterone for men. The importance of estrogen is stimulates bone, muscle, growth, and in turn prevents women from developing osteoporosis. Stimulates the growth of endometrium. Maintains female characteristics. It also works to maintain the glands, specifically the chest glands. After 10 days of the period, the estrogen hormones continues to rise and helps the growth of the ovaries. This rise has a positive effect, namely stimulating the secretion of luteinizing hormone. Note that if the estrogen concentration decrease, the luteinizing hormone concentration in the blood will decrease. There is a case of change, which is that when the rise of the gonadotropin-releasing hormone and the estrogen will stimulate the production of the luteinizing hormone, and then concentrations of hormones will rise. 
and this helps to stimulate the ovulation of the most mature egg in the ovary. After the ovulation process, the concentration of luteinizing hormone will decrease and the gonadotropin releasing hormone will gradually decrease and there will be also as a slight increase in the follicle stimulating hormone as a side effect of the process of strong secretion of luteinizing hormone. If luteinizing hormone stimulates the ovulation process of the egg and after the egg is released, the follicle turns into corpus luteum. That's why the first 14 days of the ovulation phase are called follicle phase. After the 14 days, it is called luteal phase. The corpus luteum begins to decompose slowly, but it has the benefit of stimulating the secretion of hormones. The corpus luteum secretes three important hormones, namely estrogen and progesterone and inhibin. Estrogen rises until ovulation occurs and then its concentration begins to decrease. The hormone inhibin is not secreted until the ovulation process ends, as it begins to rise, actually thanks to the corpus luteum. Progesterone stays low until ovulation occurs and then rises during the luteal phase. Until the 21 day of the cycle, both hormones, the inhibin and the progesterone also rise, and the estrogen hormones remain. The credit goes to the corpus luteum, who secretes these three hormones. Actually, what do these hormones do? The inhibin does negative feedback. It inhibits the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone. Because we are in the stage of the luteal phase, we don't need more maturation of the eggs. Progesterone is one of the most important hormones in the stage of luteal phase because it has several functions. One of them performs the operation of the negative feedback on the hypothalamus to stop the production of the hormone of the gonadotropin releasing hormone. After the process of ovulation in the stage of luteal phase, the level of progesterone increases slowly and estrogen will decrease somewhat and this is why the secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone stopped. Since the progesterone will stop the secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone, it will affect the secretion of the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. During luteal phase, when the hormones inhibin and progesterone increases, they will cause decrease in all of the gonadotropin releasing hormone and luteinizing hormone. The most important effect of progesterone is to stimulate endometrial growth. The growth of the endometrial means that every last month, either bleeding occurs or the fertilized egg implants in the endometrium. Suppose there is no fertilization, the corpus luteum will disappear and the eggs that follow are allowed to mature and the hormones secreted by the corpus luteum will decrease. When the corpus luteum disappears, the progesterone will decrease and this means that it will not be able to stop the secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone and rise the gonadotropin releasing hormone which allows the occurrence of the menstrual cycle. The conclusion is that the lack of the hormone estrogen and the progesterone means that it will not be preserved endometrium lining uterus. This means that menstruation occurs and then a new cycle occurs. Here, in short, I have drawn an illustration of how hormones are secreted. Here is the second page.
I hope that you have benefited from the information. And whoever has any comments, please write it at the bottom of the video on menstrual cycle, and I will answer all the questions. Thank you for following up. Have a good day.